Good morning, Coldwell Banker, George Realty. Uh, happy Monday. Hope everybody's having a great start to their week. Uh, unfortunately, Anthony is not going to be available today to train. So we're going to have uh, Felix here with us today. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Felix. The Fe Felix, the floor is yours. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, I've got a couple of trainings I can run through this morning with you guys. I, I wanted to maybe just get a pulse of what you guys are seeing in the marketplace, what really appeals to you guys the most before I decide which direction we could go into. Um, so what are you guys seeing in your market? What do you guys feel like you guys need right now to improve your business? Where are you guys at? If you guys can open up your cameras, that would be great also. Yeah, I'm, I I think there's a general consensus that we need to do some more business, right? So maybe anything that you can uh, teach us to in, increase our business, uh, that would be good. Okay, okay. Um, so if we talk about lead generation, we talk about prospecting, what are we doing currently? So uh, if you guys are a little bit shy, jump in the chat. You guys can always uh, put anonymous there. But how are we getting business currently? So typically when I'm teaching my coaching clients and when I'm teaching organizations, we really focus on sphere of influence and we focus on open houses and we focus on social media and cold calling and door knocking. We also focus on mailers. What are you guys doing right now that's working for you guys? Felix, uh, do you have any experience with the uh, the zero the leads? Uh, how 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 the um, helpful are they, and how you know whether it's expensive to to get the leads or what? Um, what is your experience with them? So uh, you're talking about Zillow Premier, Peter. Uh, in a, in general, uh, Zillow leads that that will um, uh, you know connect you with some yeah. kind of. Some buyers and sellers and uh, you know uh, for for your business yeah and for that program to be effective uh typically i've seen uh brokerages and teams uh really hone in a small group of agents to really buy in and do uh do most of the calls um it typically doesn't work if you if you give it to a large office round robin style for a couple of reasons because uh they're not getting enough phone calls uh, it leads to to be better and then as as uh the conversion is uh i think around four percent so as they sort of get frustrated they're going to tell everyone else in the office and there are good leads there are literally people that will turn into buyers there but um because no one's getting enough lead flow no one's going to get the results and then that will spread so i don't i don't if you're going to do it i would really find a SEAL team of five or six people, hone their skill set on those before mm -hmm. it expanded out to ex the whole office. That's going to that's gonna benefit those agents the most. That's going to benefit the office the most. That's how I would do it. Because if you give it to everybody, they may not be fully committed. They may not be converting the right way. They'll just say the leads are, are no good. The leads are good, but... Um, <clears throat> I'm also a moderator at Loud Code Agents. We talk about this topic all the time. And um, a lot of my colleagues are uh, part of Zillow Flex or they have Zillow Premier. And what they always tell me is you got to have a great CRM, a great follow-up campaign. And the average lead coming from Zillow Premier is 100, uh, 300 days from transacting. So if you don't have a 300 plus day follow-up system, most leads are just going to waste. 4% is ready to move forward today. What do you mean 360 uh, times? Well, 360 is great. Yeah, so at least at least 300 day follow-up because most of them on average are actually 300 days from transacting. That's the conversion time frame, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. Yep. Yep. So you're throwing away 96% of the leads if you don't have a follow-up system that's at least 300 days. Mm. Yep. Well, and their, so, their leads are pretty expensive too, as I was told. They are. And and really management needs to take the lead there because you know, when I used to run offices, the agents will not do that follow-up. They they just won't. They they want they want someone else to, to take that burden off their plate. Uh so if management is paying for it, management should probably in put the follow-up in place. Um, because I mean it's it's your money that that's being spent there. That's that would be my advice in that situation. But based upon what the needs are here, I think I know. 
which direction I need to take this call. So um, if we're talking about lead generation, I would talk to tell you one of my favorite classes to teach is going to be a uh, sphere of influence. So um, I'm going to go ahead. And... I, while you do that, I have a question, Felix. Would you encourage agents, whether newer to business or, or you know, that sweet spot agent, uh, obviously not the uh, experience and, and productive agents because they already have a system in play, but rather than first jump into getting uh, lead generations is to build their structure first their their platform on how they're going to follow up with these clients and then go after the leads because otherwise they're going to be in disarray right uh yeah totally you you uh you got to start with your business plan you you got to you got to know what you're doing not just throw a lot of work at it i mean that can work but you can also get burnt out at the same time so uh, i i definitely believe that there needs to be some planning uh involved in in this in this process also so um you guys will see here today that there is a planning there is a methodology and structure to this class and every class like i train on um so I'm picking this class for a couple of reasons, because I think that a lot of you guys need business now. This is, if you can get over the courage of reaching out to your sphere, this is typically the quickest way to get business now. And it's the least amount of objections that I have to teach you to overcome, because these are people that should have some kind of relationship with you. They should like you at some, at, at some level. They should trust you at some level. And um, according to NAR, um, this also equates to uh, close to 70% of the listings on the market is from a referral or from someone in your sphere. So this is actually uh, the most underutilized uh, system that I see most top agents do, um, but yet it's the most amount of money. Um, so when you look at yourself and you're, you're saying, well, oh, this guy's going to waste my time. Um, he's going to talk about stuff I already know. Here's what I normally see from top producers. You know, remember, I, I, I ran two offices in Orange County, and between those two offices, I, I, I managed over 400 agents, okay? And you guys are fall in the same category. A lot of agents said, Felix, you're wasting my time. And I had to prove to them that I wasn't wasting their time, that I could double and triple their business from just this one strategy. But they had to buy into it, okay? So I'm going to get you guys to buy in right now at a high level. Um, you guys are probably doing five or six deals from your sphere a year, and you think that that's a business. But the, this is what you guys are doing. I hope Ruben calls me thinks about selling his house. I think I saw Peter uh, says his house is too small, but I, I hope he calls me. So most of what I see is you guys are hoping and praying that your friends and family remember you because you don't want to pressure them. You're, you, you're hoping that they'll reach out to you when they're ready to do something. Let, let's, take a, let's take a survey. Is that true or not true? Because that's what I see when I'm training this class all the time. Okay. So um, you guys, I think I've trained here before, so you guys may know my background. This is my 20th year in the business. I own my own real estate franchise. I managed for the number one and number two companies in Orange County. Um, my, my second stop, I raised the office, uh, transaction count by 200 transactions in one single year. Um, uh, I've created over hundred six and seven figure top producers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So let me give you guys two exact examples of people that followed this system and made more money. Okay. This power couple is in your market. This power couple is in your market. They live in Temple City and they they specialize in selling between Arcadia and Pasadena. They came to me um, when I when I was speaking at West End Global Valley. They came up to me and said, "Hey, I want you to coach me in 2017." And at that time, they were a part of a local brokerage in West Covina, and they together combined closed six deals for forty two thousand GCI. Okay, now their combined family income is over eight hundred thousand consecutively. Now it's going to be for three years in a row. It, this is not normal for agents five and six years in the business, seven years in the business to consistently make over 800,000 combined family income GCI. Is that true or not true? 90% of their business comes from their sphere. Do I have your attention now? What about this? 
single agent. This agent is not in our market. This agent in Central Valley. But in I coached this agent from brand new to uh, today. So this agent in 2019 closed 19 transactions. Before he coached with me, he closed two in six months. Second six months of his career, he closed 17. He made 70,000. That's a top producer in Fresno, $70,000, okay? But then we took it further. So second year, he bounced to 62 transactions, 425,000 GCI. That's some good money in Central Valley, guys. And then third year, he was a, he was a top three agents by, by transaction count in out of 4,000 in Fresno County, 850,000. He made more because his price went up with less transactions last year. He made $950,000 GCI. His system is sphere of influence and referral. Okay. So, Felix, is this a single uh, agent? It's not a team. Single agent. Single 82, agent. 82, the, the transaction in one, one year? Man, well, 110 uh, in 2021. Awfully, awfully busy. Yes. Yeah. So he has typically 15 to 20 escrows any given point through the year. He's pumping a lot of transactions. Okay. So first thing, um, who has a large database? Who is born and raised in San, San Gabriel Valley or the market that you live in? Who's born and raised there? Let, let, let's, let's get you guys to open up your cameras. I want some participation here. So let, let's get you guys to open up because if you guys open up, I will give you guys value. You guys will get business this week. Okay. So who has more than 200 people that know you? I'm not talking about close family and friends. I see Paul. Thanks for participating, Paul. Paul's going to get some more value today because uh, I'm going to focus on Paul. Paul, how many people are in your sphere? My gosh, um, I would say about a good 400. Okay, 400. That, that's awesome. Okay, awesome. So here's what I want you to do, Paul. Pull out your calculator. Okay. And Lori, I'd love to hear your number also. I want you to multiply that by 14% because according to the North American Moving Company, 14% of Americans are moving each year. They track this because that's their business to move people from one destination to another. So what's 400 times 14? 56. Are you guys, are you getting 56 transactions from your sphere? <laughs> no, right? So here's the other thing that we actually don't calculate in that number and, and that are present in my, my two testimonial examples, okay? Your friends and family will also refer you to their database, their people that they know. And so it's, you could actually one day break through and, and close more than 56 transactions. You could actually get 80, 90% of your sphere. Plus they'll, they'll love you so much. They'll refer you to their friends outside of your sphere, but are in their sphere. Okay. All right. So if you, so that Paul, for you, um, I would tell you, you should get slide broadcast because um, these you're, you're not violating any uh, FCC uh, laws by sending them a slide broadcast because you have a personal relationship with these people, okay? Um, and you can drop a, a a ringless voicemail to their their voicemail, just updating them on your life, on your business, and it allows you to manage a large group of people, okay? So you may send out a slide broadcast once a week to 100 people and you just say, hey, call me back if you have some time to chat. And then now you're not making outbound phone calls to your sphere. You're just waiting for people to call you back mm -hmm. who are available to talk to you. Out of 100 people, you may have 10 conversations that day because everyone else is busy. You're, you're not going to have 100 people call you back. What is slide broadcast? It's a uh, ringless voicemail system. It basically uh, shows your your cell phone number as a missed call on their phone, and then you you leave a a pre recorded voicemail message. Hmm. Yep. Okay. So, um, it's a great way to to keep in touch with large databases. So this is how we use it. Uh, we send it out to a portion of people, and uh, so of course you're not going to say their name. I'm not going to say, "Hey, Paul, it's Felix." I'm going to say, "Hey, what's up, man? Uh, long time no talk," or "Or hey, long time no talk." Um, First, Merry Christmas, but I, I know you're spending it uh, your time today with family, but if you have some time, I'd love to catch up with you. I know we haven't talked in a while, and then that's going to bypass their voicemail. You're going to see missed call from me, and then you're going to see it in your voicemail box. You're going to listen to voicemail, and if you have the time, you may call me back. I don't need everyone to call me back. I don't want everyone to call me back, but we're going to start getting into some conversations here. Okay, so this is for people that have a larger database. If you don't have a larger database, 
you shouldn't be investing in slide broadcast. There is a cost to this. There's a monthly subscription or you can buy a bundle. You can buy like a thousand um, uh, voicemail drops like one time, right? So there's both options there, okay? So uh, Paul, for you and anyone who has a database of 200 or more people, you may want to look into slide broadcast. Okay, so phase one. Phase one, um, the way I teach it is when you have you have a lot of time and no money. A lot of time and no money. So this is a friendly system, no matter where you're at in your business. But this needs to be the first system that you guys build out completely and you dedicate your, your business to day in and day out. Because if you talk to uh, the majority of top producers, majority of top producers get majority of their business from their sphere and referral business. But yet they, most of them actually don't have a plan of action on how to tackle this. Okay. So you got to get organized. You got to, you got to look at your cell phone contacts, your social media. If you still carry a physical address book, if you still carry a physical Rolodex, uh, ask for their information from social media. You got to look at your email servers, everything. You got to get organized. Okay. This is how I teach my coaching clients how to get organized. 10 people a day. Okay. So I'm going to call 10 people and the 10 people I reach out to, no matter if they pick up or not, I'm going to then put them into an Excel spreadsheet or CRM. After a week, if I do my work, we have 50 people now organized into a CRM. Did I talk to 50 people? Probably not. I probably talked to 10 to 20 people on the phone, but I reached out to them. And that's the trigger to put them into your Excel spreadsheet or CRM. If you're going to do an Excel spreadsheet, this is the format. You guys should take a screenshot of this if you guys don't have a CRM that you're using and you want to get organized through an Excel spreadsheet. It is faster to organize through an Excel spreadsheet than upload into a CRM, but this is up to you. It's however you guys want to do it, okay? So each of these commas are different fields or columns in your Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so don't prejudge anyone. I will actually tell you the more casual the relationship, the more likely they will support you. Typically, close friends and close family are the last to support you. Okay, so at one point, I was top 50 agents in the DC metro area out of 15,000 agents. I was closing 50, 60 deals a year. Um, I'll tell you, most of my family supported me after year three or year four. I, I almost sold 100 houses in four years before they started supporting me. And it's it's very similar when I talk to most people. Most people, their family start, start supporting them in year three, year four of their business, okay? So your former coworkers are going to support instantly because they worked alongside of you in a different career and they saw your work ethic. Casual friends are likely to support you. Friends from high school and college are likely to support you immediately versus close family and friends. So don't prejudge anyone. Don't prejudge anyone. Start with old friends, start with old family. Um, think about where you take out your debit and credit card. Where are you spending money? Do you know their contact information? Do you know your dry cleaner's contact information? Do you know uh, the people at your, your kid's daycare? Do you know, do you have their contact information? Okay. Also think, uh, so if you guys are younger, think about your parents' friends. Okay. Or think about your friend's parents. Okay. Uh, you may pull out your yearbook, but here's, here's the limitless test. The limitless test is not close family and friends. The limitless test for sphere of influence is anyone that knows me by name or face. That's, that's the limitless test. Mm. So Paul, you have 400 people in your database. Is it larger if we have that definition? If we say just people that know you by name or face? Um, it's, it's probably about the same, I would think. Okay. Okay. So those people that, uh, you, you met at a family party once those people would be included in, in this definition. Okay. But uh, you know, actually it would be less, it would be less if it's, uh, you said, uh, well, Nick all combined, all combined it has to be more, right? Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, past coworkers. If you guys have a significant other, you 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 should know their family, you should know their friends, you should know their coworkers, okay? All right, so then you start your touches, okay? So this is all about building relationship with these people. This is not about spamming them. Um, this is not about asking for business. Uh, and so I've helped people build uh, close to seven-figure businesses just on the back of this system. Um, so if you're not doing 15 transactions from your sphere, that should be the goal. The goal should be, how can I get 15 transactions just from my sphere? That is an A plus. Anything over that is, is gravy. You don't have to get to 40, 50, 60, 100 transactions from your sphere. Let's get to 15. 
15 here in, in Los Angeles, in Southern California, is going to be six figures for you. Guaranteed every single year, as long as you work it. So um, have you been in touch with them or do you need to get back in touch with them? That's the question you have to ask when you start your touch points. Oh my gosh, Felix, you're, you're asking me to do something uncomfortable. I haven't talked to my old client, haven't talked to my old friend for years. How do I get back in touch? That's one of the main things I get asked when I'm teaching this class, okay? So the methods of touching base with them are in-person, video calls, calls, text, PM, DM, email, okay? It goes from most likely to build the most rapport to the least rapport. Now, emails still work, guys, but... Um, it can't it can't replace totally your calls, your text, your PMs, the in-person meetings. It cannot. Okay. All right. So here's the game plan. You're going to drop by or you're going to do your touch points. Okay. You're going to be in the moment. You're going to be genuine. You're going to be sincere. And you're going to focus on building that relationship. I'm calling Peter. I want to know how Peter is. I want to know how Peter's family is. I want to know everything that's going on in life. I want to know where Peter's vacationing uh, before the summer ends. And then what I'm going to do to drop that I'm in real estate is I'm going to end with what I call a real estate work excuse. Okay. This makes it a business call instead of a personal call. That is the difference, right? So if I talk to Peter and I don't mention business, I get off the phone, that's a personal call. That may lead to business, but that's going to be multiple steps before it, le it leads to business. I want it closer. So how am I going to truncate that time so that they will refer me business? I'm going to end with what I call a real estate work excuse. You're going to see some examples on the next page. And then I'm going to put those notes in there. Okay. So I'm going to write, Hey, you know, Peter is going to go visit Hawaii before the summer's out. And, and so Peter's also thinking that um, he's running out of his house or he wants to downsize. All the kids are, are out of college now. So he's thinking about downsizing, but next year. Okay. Got it. Okay. So remember the relationships are dynamic. Okay. It's, it goes from zero. They hate you to hundred. They love you. Um, it, it doesn't stay the same. They're not static. They're dynamic. They're always changing. Your job is to raise it every single time you touch them. That's your job. Okay. It's not going to shoot up from zero to hundred. That's not how it works, but you can inch up and you can keep it consistent. Okay. Um, here's what, th this is what I say. I say, if, if you're in the 60 to a hundred zone, you're in the referral zone. They may mention your name. If someone mentions real estate, but your job is to be the Coca-Cola real estate to them. When they mention the real real estate in their sphere and you're not there, who are they referring? And if it's not you, we're not touching them enough. Okay, your influence over them is going to to fade. It, it's not going to stay consistent, even if they love you, even if they're family, it's going to fade. They may mention a friend from high school. They may mention a, another friend that they have that's in real estate because you're not top of mind. Is this true or not true? Have we all not lost business to people in our close friends and family circle just because we weren't present in, in there when they had a need, right? Out of 20 years, I have lost to other agents. And it was because I didn't do a good job at keeping in touch with them. I don't blame them. That's my fault, okay? So today you call me, you, you, you build rapport with me, you activate my my referral beacon it's like tapping me on the shoulder okay and over time it's gonna fade um sometimes it's as as a little as two weeks sometimes it could be eight to 12 weeks where it fades it depends on your relationship and how often you keep in touch with this person so you have to contact me again to reactivate my referral beacon otherwise when it's off i'm referring somebody else is this true or not true very true all right, so here's your real estate work excuses, okay? So the top four are for brand new agents or agents that don't have any business right now because you can say these things and not have any business and not lie. I don't like lying, okay? So I'm talking to Paul and we're having a great conversation. Hey, Paul, your Dodgers are sucking this year. Whatever it is, like, oh my gosh, like, like what are they going to do? Are they going to trade for the, for uh, uh, this person? Or gonna... So we're just, we're just talking, okay? And then I'm going to say, oh, hey, sorry, I got to let you go, Paul. I've got to look up some houses on the MLS. So the excuse needs to say, scream, I'm in real estate without you ever having to say that. Okay, so if I say, sorry, I got to look up some houses on MLS, Paul, what do I do for a living? I'm a real estate agent, okay? Sorry, Paul. Hey, sorry, Peter, I got to let you go. I've got to go preview some homes. What do I do for a living? Preview homes means that you're touring a house by yourself either alone or potentially with for a potential buyer that you have, 
but you're alone. You're not showing a house. We're not, we're not lying and saying, I'm showing a house, previewing. You guys can all preview houses today without a client. You're not lying. Can you prepare a practice offer? Yes, you can. You can practice your RPA skills. So I got to prepare an offer. Sorry, I got to let you go, Ruben. I got to go prepare an offer. Sorry, I got to let you go. I got to go prepare a property valuation. Can you do a property valuation without a property to list? Yes. Okay. But what does it scream when you're doing this? And they'll say, Paul, you're, you're still in real estate? You're doing a property valuation today? Yeah, I'm still in real estate. Yeah, let me know if I can ever help you out with your real estate needs, but let me let you go. See you later. And you're off the phone. Okay. So this allows you guys to not spam your friends, not have to ever ask for referrals and get the business. If you guys master just this, just if you guys enjoy your friends and family and you guys will just call them and pour into them and have great conversations with them and then just end with a real estate work excuse, it will work. It's a gentle reminder, gentle reminder that you're the person that they need to come to. It also says, I'm busy, I'm successful, but I made time for you. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So in a coaching capacity, it may sound like this. Hey, Paul, I gotta let you go. I'm talking to Westing Grove Valley about uh, speaking uh, or speaking, uh, a speaking event I'm, I'm speaking for uh, next week. So so let me let you go. I, I gotta go coordinate with Fung at, at the board. Okay. Hey, sorry, I let you go. I, I got to coordinate with Aria Associate, uh, Arcadia Association because I'm speaking for them. I, I got a, I got a function that we're doing next month. So let me let you go. Okay. So you're going to say, oh, what class, what function? Maybe I want to attend, right? So this can serve a dual purpose, but for your purpose, it needs to scream, I'm a real estate agent so that you don't have to spam them. The better the work excuse, the less you have to spam them. Okay. And you, no one wants to spam. It's very uncomfortable. Okay. And so um, you can't say I'm in a meeting. That that, that serves no purpose. I got to do paperwork. That serves no purpose. They don't know what you do for a living if you say, uh, hey, Ruben, I'm sorry, I got to let you go. I got to do some paperwork. What could I do for a living? Anything in the world, right? It's got to scream, I'm a real estate agent. Does, is this making sense, guys? Yes, completely. Got to. It's got to scream that. So, hey, sorry, I got to let you go. So if you're real life at a home inspection, that's a great time to call people right before. Sorry, I got to let you go. Hey, the home inspector just showed up for a house that my buyers are buying in Glendale. So I got to let you go. I got to go talk to this home inspector before my buyers show up. Oh, Felix, you're still in real estate? Yeah, I'm still in real estate. I, I can help you guys out. But hey, let, do you have a need right now? Not Ruben? me, but no. But if, if I know anybody, I'll definitely call you. Oh, cool. I appreciate it. Okay, well, let me let you go. I'll catch up with you later. No worries. Yeah. So you see, I'm not desperate. My tonality is is very nonchalant, and it's just a it's a really easy reminder. Hey, I'm I'm in business. Okay. All right. So if you want to go for the gusto, you you guys need some business quickly. Uh, after that phone call, we talked about the Dodgers. We talked about the Lakers. We talked about whatever we talked about. Ruben and I and Paul and I. I'm gonna write them a handwritten note and drop it in the mail. And that's a great way to get their contact information. Also, hey hey Paul, great catching up, brother. Hey, can I get can I get your uh can I get your uh, mailing address? I want to drop you something in the mail. What do you send me? A card. And what is it going to be on that card? A summary of what we just talked about on our phone call. With my business card. And I'm going to write, I'm never too busy for your referrals. If you ever hear about anyone buy, sell, investing in real estate, let me let me know. And so you can spam them written. It doesn't doesn't come across the same. They'll flip it over. They'll read it. They'll say, oh, cool. Hey, that's great. And then throw it out. But they won't think that you're you're a spammy, salesy person if you write it on, on some kind of card. If you say it to them, it's very uncomfortable, really awkward sometimes. And they think you're salesy. They sometimes think you're only their friend because you want business. But you can write it on a card, no problem. So we teach to write it on the card. And we teach actually in our, in our sphere of influence system, you should be sending some kind of card like this out to your sphere once a quarter. So again, this is how we get 20, 30, 40, 50 from our sphere, not five or six. Are Felix, we Felix so, when you say card, you mean a postcard? Postcards are the cheapest, brother. Like uh, the secret we found is uh, postcard stamps are 35 cents. Um, you can find a postcard for like five cents per postcard on Amazon. And we just send those out once a quarter, right? Um, if you want to spend more money or have someone else print it or do it, you can do that. The, the cost probably goes up to two or $3 per person per quarter, but I can get away with 50 cents per person per quarter if I handwrite a postcard. And the benefit of postcard is even though you have to handwrite it, 
you're not writing more than four or five sentences because there's there's limited space on the postcard. So you're writing four or five sentences and you're writing, I'm never too busy for your referrals and your phone number and you're, you're, you're good to go and you're writing your number, right? So um, these are really easy. Um, you guys can, can figure out people's birthdays and send them a birthday card from Facebook and LinkedIn. So on their birthday, you can say, hey, Ruben, happy birthday. Hey, what's your mailing address? I'd like to send you a birthday card. Who's going to say no to an additional birthday card? No one. So you just ask for it, even if it's on their birthday. And put it in your Excel spreadsheet. So next year, I send it to, to Ruben before his birthday. But I don't care if I send it to him late the first year. I'm sort of getting that system in process. I don't care. He's still going to like it. And I'm going to say happy belated birthday. And maybe I, I give a $5, $10 Starbucks gift card with it. Okay. All right. So um, you can always touch base with past clients, ask them how they're enjoying the home. You can always ask them, is there anything you can help them out with? You can always ask them uh, if they have any real estate services you they need, but it is more spammy. It is more direct. You cannot talk about this on every single phone call. This is why you just have to catch up on life with them. Build a, a sincere relationship with them because if you call me once a month and you, you're asking me these same three questions, I'm going to get annoyed. You ask me this once a year, I don't care. I'm happy you're you're following up with, with me, great customer service, and ask me this once a year. That's fine. You can't ask me this every month. You can't ask me this every week. What else are you going to fill in? So you're just going to call me once a year and ask me for business? Is that a good customer-client relationship? Is that a good friendship? Okay. So um, you guys can, can create your own programs. Like you can create free credit repair programs and you can tell them about it. Hey, do you know someone with poor credit? I'm, I'm creating a free credit repair program for people with bad credit. So if you hear anyone in your sphere that has bad credit, but wants to buy, let me know. Okay. So you guys can create uh, retirement uh, investment plans and, and say, Hey, how's your retirement? Well, I'm, I'm starting this real estate investment program for, for people that want to uh, buy and hold or invest in real estate. Um, would you like to know more about it? And it creates some conversation there. Okay. But this is the dialogue that I use when I'm actually spamming people once or twice a year. Okay. So this is the only way I spam people. Okay. So I'll say, hey, Lucy, I'm about to spend some money on a marketing campaign to pick up some more clients. But before I did so, I just want to check in with you and see who do you know um, that's looking to buy or invest in real estate? Because I, I'd rather work with someone that you know than a complete stranger that's responding to my marketing. And so when I use this, I'm really about to spend money. I typically still spend the money, whether it's on, on mailers or whether it's still on Facebook ads or Google pay-per-click, I'm still going to spend the money. But it's a great uh, time of year where I'm just going to call my sphere and shake the tree and, and see if money falls out. And this is the only time that I do this. But I bet if I called you once or twice a year like this, you wouldn't feel like it's spam. But if I call you every month like this, it is spam. So think about how you feel when you're listening to this class. I'll tell you, most people are going to react the way I'm, I'm mentioning. Not all. Some people will still think you're spamming when you use this, but most people will not. Most people will like this methodology. They'll think, oh, cool. So basically, Paul wants to be my best friend and expects me to, to give him a shot at my business. That's what we're trying to get after. Peter wants to, uh, to be my best friend, and he wants a shot at my business. Great. That's cool. Um, if you guys haven't been in touch with them for a while, you got to send a sorry for falling out of touch text. I'll, I'll give you that text a little bit later on. Okay. Um, you may want to request them on social media if they un unfriended you or or they're not connected with you. Okay. Um, it's really easy to like and comment on their new and old social media posts because then now your so your your name pops up on their Facebook or your name or your handle pops up on Instagram. Okay. So and you can also reply to Facebook and Instagram stories. So these are great ways if if you haven't talked to someone in two or three years to get back in touch with them. You, you, you go ahead and you use their social media posts as a way to connect and bridge the time that you guys lost. All right. So I don't know that many people. I'm not from here. Anyone in this category or I keep a small circle. I'm, 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 uh, I'm introverted. I keep a small circle. I only know 30 to 50 people. I hear this a lot. Okay. Um, the quickest ways to build this are you look at your activities. What do you enjoy doing? Okay, whether you enjoy going to church on Sunday, whether you enjoy going to the gym, whether you enjoy going out to dinner, 
or networking, you can find a way to add more people to your sphere of influence. Okay. My favorite, bar none, my favorite for $50 a year is join a local Toastmasters. Not only do you get uncomfortable and you get better at public speaking, you typically have these chapters of 20 to 50 business owners or people that want to get better at public speaking. Who wants to get pub better at public speaking? Typically, some pretty dynamic, pretty cool people. So not only can you better your skills in front of a crowd, but you can then also be part of a lot of these people own their own businesses uh, and they have money and they're they're affluent in the community. And so I love Toastmasters. So if you guys will join a local Toastmasters, they're going to require you to give speeches. Yes, you can't can't join Toastmasters unless you're going to give speeches. But that's the best bang for your buck. Fifty dollar networking club I've ever found. And you're they don't. They don't expect you to support them, but that's the best way. Okay. Um, otherwise, you're you're going to be going to meetup.com, and you may, if you like to eat, you may be going to those those dinner meetings where there's there's maybe ten double dating couples, and and you know you're going to Bestia, and you're going to this sushi place or this Chinese place, and you're just networking and meeting people. That happens on meetup.com all the time, also. Okay. But you can't do nothing. You can't sit at your house and complain that you don't have any business. You can't sit at the office all day long and complain you don't have any business if you're not getting out there and talking to people. This is a contact sport. You got to talk to people one way or the other. And I will tell you, if you guys are veterans like me with two decades in the business or or more, I'd rather work a, a family or friend because the transaction is a lot smoother than a complete stranger that doesn't know me, that doesn't trust me, that will ghost me in the middle of a transaction. I've had that too. So when I cold prospect, when I'm cold calling, when I'm door knocking, when I'm sending mailers out to people and getting business, I can't, I don't know what to expect from those people because I have no prior relationship with them. They could ghost me literally while they're selling their house. And I'm like, escrow, I don't know. The seller just disappeared on me, right? How do I get back when I don't know them? I can't pull them back sometimes, right? Family and friends, not that problem, okay? Because of your relationship, of your history, they will still respond to you, okay? Um, if you're a new agent, you may want to send out some new agent announcements, letting people know that you're in real estate. You can spam a little bit in the beginning because you're just excited and proud of your accomplishment of getting your license. You should post it on all social media outlets, right? Um, but this is don't don't get it complicated. Just just ask for their birthdays, ask for their mailing address. Most of them will give it to you. I find that eighty percent of people will just give it to you. Ten percent of people will say why, and ten percent won't respond at all. Who cares? But the ten percent that that won't respond or will make you feel awkward about it is enough where you guys won't do these activities. I don't know why. If I ask you your birthday and your mailing address, you didn't respond. I'm just like, okay, cool. Next. That's okay. Means I won't send you something on your birthday. Okay, no problem. Okay. You want to like and comment their posts. You want to reply to stories. So if Ruben tells me he's buying a house next year, you better trust that I'm going to like and comment and be top of mind for the next year. <laughs> it's very easy. Because again, I like Ruben. He's my friend. Why would I? It's I'm not I'm not being fake. I'm just I'm just I just know that hey, as long as I stay top of mind, I should have a shot at the business. I should I should be at the listing appointment. Okay. Um, here's how you get organized really easy. Just pull out your phone and just start start calling the A's today. Um, so if you have 10 A's, you're done for the day. If you have 20 A's, you're gonna call A's today and tomorrow. They're going to move on to B. By the time you finish the alphabet, it's about time to contact the A's again. So it'll take you about 30, 40 days to get through your list. Um, if, if, if you're like Paul, it may take you 60 days to get through your list. And then it's time to recall the list. And now um, the people that you called 60 days ago is now old. It's okay to call them again now to catch up because it's been two months. There's a lot that happens in people's lives in two months. So now you catch up again and then you repeat this process. And you will double or triple your referral count just by doing this. Here's a trick, guys. Hey, really, honestly, not don't focus on the business. Don't have commission breath. Like, truly, just treat them like family and build that relationship, and and just let the the real estate work excuse do the work for you. So here's what you're gonna find. This is real life. What my coaching clients, uh, my agents that were in my offices would tell me. Yeah, I use your real estate work excuse. I said I'm meeting an appraiser on my listing today, which they were really doing. And here's what the friend said. Oh, you're still in real estate? Hey, uh, we want to put our house on the market soon. Can you come over and do a valuation? True story. 
oh, hey, that, that reminds me, I need to talk to you because we're preparing to buy our first house. That really happened, okay? Hey, um, my coworker mentioned that she's getting married and she wants to buy a house. Could you help her? That really happened because you didn't spam them and you just mentioned to them that you're in real estate indirectly with your real estate work excuse, okay? So they may respond, are you still doing it? They they may respond like, oh my gosh, like I, I have a need. So they may volunteer as a client in the, now or in the near future, okay? And that's a lot better than you asking them, do you, do you, do you know anyone, right? Like that, that most people won't pick up the phone and ask that question, all right? All right, so uh, you can also ask your title rep to get you some data on which of your sphere owns houses and you guys can start just push, like you can just literally start mailing CMAs to them. Hey, did you know your, your home value is 1.3 million right now? Okay, so we're not gonna do the prospecting, but um, um, this is a really fun one. Um, some ideas here, okay? So if you guys were to just, Go back in your phone and find old pictures of you with family and friends, and you sent them as a text that picture or on Facebook Messenger. That's a great conversation starter. Okay, your job as you walk through this process is how can I start conversations with people, and and it's within my comfortability level, and I don't feel like I'm spamming them. That is what you guys all need to ask yourself. Okay, because when I send an old picture, I don't. I don't have an issue with that. I, I love talking about those old memories and those old times and, and I laugh and, and you know what they, they do when they get it, they, they smile and they laugh too. Okay. This is not the, the picture that you took with, with your soul sign um, when you help them buy a house. Don't make it about the transaction. Make it about your relationship with them. But this is this is some ways that you can reconnect with. I thought about you today, uh, Ruben. I, when do you have a few minutes to catch up? I'm texting this to Ruben. Okay. Hey, uh, Paul. I'm so sorry for falling out of touch. I'm I'm a bad friend. Will you forgive me? Do you have some time to catch up? With <laughs> and so, look, guys. Some of you guys say, "Well, I didn't do anything wrong." Uh, just fall on the sword, guys. Just fall on the sword because look, this is what's going to happen. Okay. So I will send this text out to five people, and this is the breakdown. Okay. Three out of the five people will just start talking to me. Like nothing happened. Okay. Okay. Uh one of the, the one out of the five people will say, Hey, it wasn't your fault. I could have called you. I'm also a bad friend. So they'll take some responsibility for it. One out of five will just not respond. Does that affect your life? That someone that you weren't in touch with for three years doesn't respond to your text message? Does it make sense, guys? Stop letting what people think about you affect your family and your income because hey if if they if i haven't been in touch and they don't respond to this guess what the ball is their court it's not my fault that we're no longer in touch now because i've sent them an olive branch and they don't receive it i don't have to do anything else do i need to beg them to be my friend again no the ball is their court is this making sense if you send this text out right now you're going to get some responses Okay. And so typically I make people who go through this class, send out all of these text messages. And we typically get people into transactions on this call. We're not going to go through this. I'm just going to show you how to get back in touch with people. Okay. So phase two, you exhausted phase one, you talked to everybody. Now, what do you do, right? Now they're going to want to meet up, right? So you can use the slide broadcast to update people about your life. So you may send out testimonials. Hey, I just wanted to let you know about a recent sale I had. It was the toughest one of my life. It was in El Monte and, and this came up and this came up and this came up. Um, so uh, I just want to let you know that not all transactions are smooth, but I, I, I'm prepared to help anyone and no matter the difficulty of the transaction, whatever. Hey, I have an upcoming listing in Arcadia. If you know anyone that is looking for a house, it's 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 2,000 square feet. It's It was built in 1980s, but re recently renovated. So it's got everything that people want today, whatever. Okay, buyer needs. Hey, um, I have a buyer need. Do you do you know any family or friends that, that want to sell their house that has this type of house in Temple City? And so you can do that, or you can just say, hey, uh, summer's over. I just wanted to update you on what we've been up to. Uh, we went to you know this place. We went to Florida. We went to Miami. We went to uh, Caribbean, and then and then we came back home. Whatever, okay. 
Um, here's the secret. Um, so all of my uh, top producers that I coach, uh, I want them to spend fifty to one hundred dollars a month in a uh, a custom Facebook ad campaign that is directed to their sphere. How do you do this? Well, um, you got to have their their email address and their phone number. So uh, as you're may you're starting your touch points and you're touching base with 10 people a day, you're collecting all of these things on Excel spreadsheet. Then you, now you can use it to upload it into Facebook and for, for pennies, like literally like two cents or three cents per impression, you can be in front of them. And you're going to follow them on their phone on Facebook and Instagram. And it's not going to be high pressure to them. They're going to say, Oh my gosh, Paul is a big deal. He's he's, I see his ads everywhere. And you let the ad do the work for you. And it's just to your sphere. And because it's to a custom audience, the cost goes way down. It's pennies instead of dollars. And you start to you protect home base, which is your sphere of influence from other agents. Because everyone knows a dozen agents in Southern California. Okay, you can send out monthly postcards. Uh, quarterly is is honestly all you really need to capture a fair share. All right. Um, so these are the Coral Reef postcard stamps. You you want you want to buy a coil? Coil is a hundred, thirty five bucks. That's it. Okay. And keep it simple. Hi, can can I get your mailing address? I'm going to send you something. Keep it simple. Okay. So phase three. Phase one, you got organized, start your touch point. Phase two, you started implementing some, some technologies or things to touch them at a wider scale. So we may have used live broadcasts. We may have done some mailings. Now they're asking to meet up. They're going to say, okay, hey, I've talked on the phone, but hey, I haven't seen you in forever, Peter. When are we going to actually meet up? So now um, you may do some video meetups, but really they're going to want to meet up in person. So uh, I teach a lot of coffee dates. So, so meet your family and friends for, for coffee. It's a lot cheaper than dinner or, or brunch or, or expensive lunches. Um, you don't have to treat, um, Panera bread. Um, and what is the other one? Um, corner bakery. These are great because you can just sit there half the day and I can meet Ruben at nine and, and Peter at 10 and Paul at 11. And between those meetings, I'm just working. Okay. But they're going to start to ask you to meet. So uh, remember that couple that lives in uh, Temple City and, and they make uh, close to 900000 Well, you know, they go to every single engagement party. They go to every single baby shower. They go to every single wedding. And they make money by going to their family's events and friends' events. Okay. So uh, you can also do like pop by, drop by visits. Um, th this is literally from Brian Buffini, so I'm not going to talk about this too much, but this also works. It's just an excuse to drop something off and see them real quick or just to drop something off so they are reminded of you. These are all reminders, okay? So um, you yeah. can just go pop by ideas and get a whole bunch of ideas here, okay? All right, phase four. So you're running out of time in the week. So now you're going to group them together. So you may host a happy hour. You may host a potluck. Uh, you may go to, uh, you may do a barbecue somewhere. You may go bowling. You may go do some karaoke or Dave and Buster's, or you may go hiking together, or you may organize brunch, lunch, or dinner. Uh, guys, uh, you're in San Gabriel Valley. Chinese restaurants are all the cheap. You can go to dim sum. I mean, I, I can pay for a table of 20 people at dim sum and I can be under 300 bucks. It, it's amazing. Okay. So guys, uh, organize a volunteer day. You can guy you can you can reach out to uh, uh, local churches and food banks and and see how you can organize a volunteer day, and you are elevated to a different level when you're organizing a volunteer event in the eyes of your family and friends. Beach day. Uh, well, beach is sort of far away from you guys, so I don't know that the, that would be convenient for most people. Uh, but art walk and and meetup.com and escape rooms and art and wine. Okay, so now phase five. You have plenty of money in no time. Now, um, you know, that same couple that made 900000 they rented out a movie theater before in Arcadia for $4,000. Oh. And they, it was 60 people. And those are luxury heated reclining seats for 4000 bucks, And they got business out of it. But you're not dropping $4,000 to rent out uh, a movie theater to, for the next premiere of Star Wars unless you're getting business out of it and unless you're leading with money. That's why I'm not teaching this day one. You, you see how this is phase five. 
you're now making over probably two, 300,000 just from your sphere. And now you should reinvest it. They, they spend six to $10,000 on a, a yearly client appreciation party in December. And they can tie at least half of their income back to the, that appreciation party. So to them, it's worth $400,000. Would you guys trade 10,000 for a client appreciation party for 400,000? The reason why you guys never got here is because you guys think that you're spamming your friends. The reason why you guys never got here is because you don't have a system that you can walk through systematically to get to. Um, you can organize a 5K run, go to the city and petition, and they'll block off the streets for you. And you can petition a 5K run, and you can have your name on all the bibs. Peter Cam, Cool Banker George on all the runners' bibs. And all the other sponsors are on there also, but you get to be on all of them because not only are you're the organizer event, you don't have to sponsor anything. You're just organizing it. Large volunteer events of 50 people at the food bank. Uh, you can rent out a, a boat or a cruise out of Long Beach or or uh, or uh, or South Bay. I, I know they, they leave Torrance also and, and Redondo Beach. Um, so you could take maybe take something to uh, Catalina for the day. Uh, paintball. These are large activities. Okay. So I'm going to open up to questions. Um, you guys have been really quiet, but hopefully this has been some kind of impact for you today because I really, my, my goal here today is not just to fill in for Anthony. I want to impact you guys. And I don't feel good unless I impacted you guys. So those people that are sort of hiding and not participating, please, 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 I let me know. Because also asking questions means that you, you will implement a higher level. Asking questions means that you guys will get your questions answered. I'm an open book, but I, I need you guys to trust hi, me. Hi, Felix. Good morning, Jeffrey. Hey, Jeffrey. Yeah, uh, and can you give us your contact information, please? Um, uh, I will give it to Ruben, and uh, Ruben can, can get it to you guys if you guys want it. So um, uh, I, I am taking one-on-one -on -one coaching clients, and if you guys are looking for something like that, we can talk, and we can talk about um, what that entails. Sure. Thank you. Felix. You have a lot of uh, you have a lot of insightful uh, ideas, and one of them is uh, joining the uh, uh, the the toaster master toastmaster. Uh huh. Uh, do you do you go to one or do you have any referral to a, a good one? Oh, so I I did I I used to go to Toastmasters and uh, yeah it was amazing um, experience. So I beat out my friend. She placed number three in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Do you it still was, go? Uh, uh, yeah, it was years ago. So um, it was when I was in management. Um, so I, I was working for a large independent brokerage and I was part of the breakfast club. So it started at seven. It ended at like eight, eight thirty. And I was able to get to the office by by nine o'clock. Um, but that was in Anaheim. Yeah. Um, so this is your plan, guys. Take a screenshot of this. So if you guys were taking notes, if you guys were participating in this. Your, your daily operation is 10 calls and 10 texts a day. So I'm going to call Ruben. Ruben doesn't pick up. He can be one of my texts. I'm going to call Peter. Peter doesn't pick up. He's one of my 10 texts. Paul picks up. So he's he comes for my call, but not for my text. I'm not going to text Paul afterwards. Okay. So uh, minimally, you're going to reach out to 10 people a day. Maximum, you may actually reach out to 20 people a day through this method. This will take you anywhere from one to three hours a day, but it's worth it. It is worth it. And it's the cheapest system that you guys can build. Okay. Weekly, you're looking for reaching out to 50 people minimally. That's your weekly goal. Monthly goal, you're reaching out to 100 people monthly. Quarterly, you want to hit everyone in your database. So, Paul, you have 400 people. Your goal is to reach out to 400 people. That means that monthly, you actually have to reach out to about 134 people on a monthly basis. You can do that. Okay. So now you've broken it down. Okay. Goal is every quarter you're going to try to see them in person or or call them. Okay. And so the, uh, we're we're almost. Wow, I, it's crazy. We're in third quarter, almost fourth quarter. Fourth quarter is really easy to see um, almost your whole database, okay? Uh, between uh, Thanksgiving, Friendsgiving, Christmas, New Year's parties, uh, get-togethers, you can see the bulk of your database, okay? And a lot of it's free events, so go out there. Um, isn't there like a famous street in Arcadia and Glendale uh, that has Christmas lights? I mean, oh my gosh, just literally get get other families together and walk the street together and bring some hot chocolate. How hard is that? In a thermos, because, so so it's hot. Like it doesn't take too much thinking and planning, but you just have to make Do it. it actually. 
you just have to do it, right? And then quarterly, do some pop buys and quarterly, do some mailings. And so I've proven this is, is a minimum of $200,000 a year if you do this with at least 100 people in your database. If you don't have 100 people, you need to get to know 100 people and then put them into this system. That's it, guys. And don't be salesy and spammy because because the whole point here is to be genuine and don't care if they use somebody else. Peter, Peter, hey, I understand that you you thought, uh, you know, Agent B w was better in that situation. Hey, we're still friends, but I, I hope I get a shot next time because, you know, I, I really think that I could have done just as good, if not better job than Agent B. I'm not going to lose a friendship over that. Guys, my aunt bought a house or my, my aunt bought a house in Virginia uh, and sold her house without me. And she asked for advice. And I had to tell her, I can't give you advice. There's something called agency and you have an agency really relationship with somebody else. And that agent could get me in trouble, even though you're my aunt. My cousin bought a bought and sold a house in Burbank, $900,000, $950,000 purchase. When they sold it four years later, it was 1.3. My cousin didn't use me. Well, Felix, Burbank's really clicky. You're you're down in Orange County. Um, so we're going to use a local Burbank agent. And she hated the experience and she called me every single day. And I said, I can't help you. But I still love my cousin. I still love my aunt. Not everyone's going to use you guys. You want to get most of the business where you won't care if you don't get everything. If you guys are doing 20, 30 deals a year, you're still going to feel hurt, but you're not, it's not going to affect your lifestyle. It's not going to affect your family. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Philip, you know, that uh, Anthony told me, told us that uh, you're going to do a 20 minutes presentation, but it has been oh. almost an hour now, <laughs> but we uh, enjoy every bit of it. Okay. Thank you for, for coming to talk to us and really appreciate it. Uh, yes. We can get yes. Hopefully it's helpful guys. All right. Felix, thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah, very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. I see thank you. you. So, so Felix, it, I'm going to send uh, a feeler out for those who want to be coached by you, right? That's what you are requesting of me. You're on mute. You're on mute. Yes. Jeffrey. No, it's Felix. No, not Felix. Uh, sure, sure. I, I'm not. Um... Taking clients? Well, it, no, it's more like uh, I don't want to spam people. So if you guys found value and you guys want to, uh, you want you want some coaching, then we can talk about that. Okay, sounds good. Okay, thank you, Felix. Okay, right, thanks okay, again. Bye bye. All right. Well, let's move forward quickly. Um, I hope everybody got value out of it. I think he had a lot of good pointers there. So at the end of the day, it's just doing it right. So you have to get up, wake up, overcome your fear, and and make those calls stay on, stay top of mind. A um, couple birthday shout outs. Paul, happy birthday. It's his birthday actually today. All right. And uh, Gerges, if you're out there, happy birthday as well. A uh, couple reminders for this week, 10 a.m. on Wednesday, we're going to have our third uh, commercial class. That's going to be via Zoom. It's the same link from the first and the second. So, if you have the first or second link, it's going to be the same. You don't need a new one. Regard, uh, nonetheless, we are going to send a reminder with the link, okay? Friday, we're going to have a training on Ignite RE. I was going to dabble in it today, but we are out of time. But I encourage every agent to attend this Friday, 10 a.m., virtually or in person. It's going to be hosted by Angie Tang with First American Title. This software that she has that she's offering for free to agents has so much powerful tools in it. So you should send her an email and get the access to Ignite RE, okay? Um, Doug is not with us today. So I am just gonna go over uh, the business for uh, Alhambra and then we'll do the spin wheel and I'll hand it over to Peter. Uh, uh, Ruben, I think uh, for me, I would prefer the uh, talk uh, till next time because we're okay. running out of time. Right. I it's agree. Not, uh, it is not fair for, for the agents to wait for me. I agree. I concur. So yeah. really quick, let's just uh, go over the business from last week. Richard Wang has a new sale in your Belinda at 1.535. I remind you, he is a new real estate agent a residential real estate agent. He came over from the commercial world. So congratulations, Richard. You're doing phenomenal. Um, Shoemakeham has two leases in Arcadia. 
And uh, Tatiana has a new sale um, in West Hills at 810. Congratulations to you, Tatiana. And Gustavo, he has a he double ended his um, condo in Los Angeles at 397. So congrats to you. Uh, listings, we have four new listings for last week. Um, the first one, Christina Fan has a lease listing in Temple City, 2875 So if anybody knows anybody that needs to rent in Temple City, please contact Christine. Uh, Karina Pang has a residential property in Walmart. I'm sorry, Walnut, not Walmart, Walnut for $999,000. Just shy of a million dollars. And she also has a lease in San Gabriel for, uh, didn't say if it's commercial or residential, it looks like it's residential, for $600 to $1,000 a month. Um, and then Sandy Sandy has a listing in Monterey Park for $848,000. So congratulations to you all. And just before I we leave, let's see who wins. Can, can I uh, mention mine to be on the lookout because it's, uh, it's not coming. yet, but it's not coming soon. C can I go ahead and pitch while you do the wheel? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. Okay. I just want to let you know that um, I'm going to have a triplex coming up in Temple City. So Temple City Schools is going to be listed at 1.850. And um, it's uh, tenant occupied, but the tenants uh, have been given their 60 day notice. And it's in really good condition. There's only maybe like some paint that needs to be done. Um, and it is an original condition. So tile counters, but it's very clean. So anyway, just want to let you know, be on the lookout because I am going to have an open house on Saturday and Sunday, but it's not on the market. Hopefully I can uh, put it on the market today or tomorrow. Okay. Camelia, if you could put together a flyer, I can send it out, distribute it um, company wide because we only have about 40 people on here, but we have about 300 agents. So if you want to get max exposure, send that to me. We'll do that. All right. Also, so that being said, before I do this wheel, if you have a listing, I encourage you to come on to our Monday meeting and pitch it. Okay. You never know another agent within Coldwell Banker George Realty that has a buyer, potential buyer, and you guys can sell it re relatively fast. Also, in addition to that, you should, if you have a listing, you should put it in your board's caravan. Contact your uh, association and include it in that week's caravan, okay? You don't have to be a member uh, to Pasadena's or Acadia's uh, caravan uh, to be included. So you can actually do, uh, contact them and they'll put it on that caravan, okay? It's, so, it's, it has tenants though. It, okay, sorry. So here's a listing survival kit. Compliments of Angie Tang has everything an agent needs for a open house. Okay. So let's see who wins that today. Paul, wouldn't that be great on your birthday, huh? <laughs> My name's not on there. Ooh, should be. No. All right, Herman. It's okay. All right, Herman. <laughs> it's there. Let's see. Sure. Hold on. I saw it. I put your name in there. Let me see. Where is he? Oh, Frank. Oh, okay. Well, it's okay. Next time. Next time. All right. Peter, who was the winner? That's uh, Herman, right? Herman. Herman. All right, Herman. I have your uh, survival kit here. All right, that's all we have for this week. We'll see everybody next week. Thank you for attending. Okay, I I have uh you know I have a, a client who's looking for a luxury house in uh, particularly in the Arcadia Whispering Pine, uh, three to three million to six million dollars. So if you have any listing or any leads to that, appreciate to uh, let me know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody, have a nice week. Right, have a nice and, week. Uh, we'll see you next Monday. Bye-bye.